Hi. Good morning. My name is Lindsay and I'm an educator for the St. Louis Zoo. The St. Louis Zoo is celebrating Tiger Awareness Day today and it is World Tiger Day. This is so exciting. I would like to point out that I am wearing a mask. Mine is lowered though because I'm not sharing space with anyone and I'm presenting this webinar from my home. In a little bit though, we will connect to my friend and coworker Connor who is on grounds at the St. Louis Zoo. All about tigers, Tiger Awareness Day at the St. Louis Zoo and World Tiger Day around the world. So we have two Amur tigers at the St. Louis Zoo. We have Waldemir or commonly known as Waldo. He's our male. And Callista, who is our female. And here's another image. So our tigers really enjoy engaging with their enrichment. This is an image of, I believe, Waldo with a boomer ball. And these are safe that they can play with and have fun. But who else loves to swim? Do we all know that tigers really enjoy and are great at swimming? But there are some other big cats that love to swim. Kim just kicked up a poll for you all to take. Which cat besides the tiger loves to swim? Is it the lion, the jaguar, or the leopard? Oh, some friends said lion, some others said leopard. Guess what? It is the jaguar. Jaguars love to swim. So let's see some images. Here's Callista swimming in her pool at the St. Louis Zoo. And here's Waldo. I especially love this picture. Look at his eyes. Oh, he looks like he's enjoying himself. And here is one of our uh, jaguars. I'm not sure which jaguar that is actually, but one of our jaguars at the St. Louis Zoo. These friends love to swim and they are great at it. So Amur tigers are the largest big cat in the world. And in the wild, they're found in Russia, North Korea, and China. You may have known these animals to be called Siberian tigers. It's the same animal, but the name was changed due to their uh, habitat range decreasing. They're now mostly found around the Amur River. And that's where they get their new name from. They used to be um, found all through Siberia in that region, but no longer due to habitat loss. So something you can do to help them out is only purchasing FSC, so certified sustainable wood products, and also avoiding any uh, items that were poached and uh, created from tigers, so tiger pelts, things like that. All right, so my friend Tiger is on grounds. So I think we are going to check with him and see if he is ready to talk with us today. Have a wonderful shot of our beautiful female tiger, Callista. We're here on a beautiful day at the St. Louis Zoo. I can't tell you how special it is to finally be back and also to have the opportunity to talk to one of our amazing zookeepers. This is Jeff Wilson. He is a carnivore keeper at the zoo. Jeff, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you, what you do? Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to International Tiger Day uh, here at St. Louis Zoo. Uh, uh, my name is Jeff. I'm a carnivore keeper. Um, so I have the privilege of working with these amazing cats uh, every day. Um, today, of course, we are focusing on our uh, on your tigers. Um, as you can see behind me, we have Callista. Uh, she is our 19-year-old female tiger. Um, and we also have Waldemir. Uh, he's inside right now. He's our 16-year-old uh, male tiger. Um, Callista was born in Philadelphia. Uh, she came to us when she was only about three years old. So she's lived here a long time. And uh, sorry, my mask keeps falling. <laughs> um, Waldo, uh, he came to us about nine years ago. Um, so uh, you may wonder why when you come here that the you only see one tiger at a time. Um, the reason for that is in the wild, tigers are primarily solitary. So you don't see them living in groups. Um, and here it's the same. So we do rotate them twice a day. Uh, so everybody gets plenty of outside time. Um, so we somebody's out overnight and then we bring them in first thing in the morning and then they go out uh, and then we swap them again at the end of the day. So, um, and then actually every week we will swap them uh, so that they uh, one a different one is out during the day and night. Um, so we want to make sure everybody gets plenty of uh, uh, outside time. Um, 
Callista actually has had uh, six cubs total in her life. Um, if anybody was lucky enough to be visiting in 2008 when she had her uh, her uh, litter of five, um, that was quite a, quite an amazing uh, thing to watch and to experience. Um, typically, they give birth to about two to three cubs. So for her to have five cubs uh, was a very uh, a huge huge litter. So. Um, but she ended up proving to be one of the most amazing mothers. She took care of them all. Um, and they have all since gone on to other zoos um, where uh, I believe three of them have had cubs of their own. So she's a grandma. Um. <laughs> now we said earlier, tigers are the biggest of all the cats alive today. Can you give us a little perspective on what that means? How much do these animals eat and how much do they weigh? Uh, so Callista is about 250 pounds. Um, the females are a little bit smaller than the males, uh, where Waldo is around uh, 330 pounds. Um, so she eats about, uh, she gets about six and a half pounds of meat a day, uh, whereas Waldo gets about uh, seven, seven and a half to eight pounds a day. Um, so they usually get a ground meat as their basic diet. Um, but then also some days they'll get bones or they'll get um, uh, whole prey, which is like rabbits or uh, rats. Um, you know, cats can be very picky. So some of them will uh, choose to eat some items over another. We have cats that like fish and some that don't. We have cats that like um, mice, some that don't. So um, it's, all, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, we are able to get regular weights on them. So everybody is trained. Uh, to get on scale so we can monitor their weight and their overall health. Yeah. So obviously training a tiger is no easy <laughs> feat, um, but what are some of the behaviors that these tigers are trained to do to better their, their own health and welfare? Yeah, we do a lot of training here um, and all of our training is uh, positive reinforcement and it's also voluntary, which means if the animal does not feel like training that day, they don't have to. Um, and then everything we do is for is positively reinforced. Um, so some of our training is um, it can be very simple, like uh, target training, or like I said, getting on a scale, so we can do that. Um, and the tigers have actually uh, we they do they do more complex training, such as blood draws and injections. So um, we do not enter with any of our animals. So everything we have to do is protective contact. Um, but we are able to pull their tail out and draw blood from that, um, which is really, really important for their overall health. And so our vet staff can get regular blood um, to, to assess their health um, long term. Very, very cool. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. This has been such a neat experience. We are so fortunate to have Calista front and center ready to join us in this webinar. I'm going to bring our camera a little bit closer so we can get a good look at her today. This is such a lucky day to see her out like this. It's almost like she knew we were doing a program on her. Maybe she saw my mask and got excited. She had a fan behind the scenes a little bit. Hey, yeah, Connor and Jeff. Chat. Yes. We have some questions from people. If you, I'm not sure, Jeff, if you have time to answer a few for us. I will certainly Absolutely. Try. So we have a question that says, where did Waldo arrive from? Uh, Waldo was born in Denver. He came to us in 2011. Nice. So from the Denver Zoo? Yes. And then someone else asked, what is your favorite thing about working with tigers? <laughs> you know, both of our tigers are very personable, um, and, which is very, very lucky. Uh, Callista, uh, she loves getting uh, attention, so you can often see her running around trying to get a keeper's attention. Um, Waldo is a little bit more uh, reserved, but you know he's always good for a greeting. Um, so I will have to say, just walking in in the morning and having both tigers come over and chuff at you and basically greet you good morning is just a great way to start the day. Now, can you explain what chuffing is? Chuffing is a vocalization that tigers will do. Um, it's a bit like a positive greeting. So when they're very happy to see somebody or whether it's another tiger or a keeper, um, they will make this vocalization. Um, I, I can't duplicate it, <laughs> but um, uh, that, that's the way they say hello. Oh, that's exciting. Thank you for telling us more about that.
Um, and someone else said kind of on that note, how loud is a tiger roar? Um, you know, and, can, and they purr, are they a type of cat that purrs? Uh, tigers, uh, they can roar pretty loud. It's, it's not like, it's not like a lion, uh, which you can hear from a mile away. Um, but they do have a couple of different, uh, vocalizations. Um, and they have a long call vocalization, which is how they would communicate to, you know, another tiger that this is their territory. Um, so yeah. Um, one of the other questions too, that I didn't want to try to guess, um, how maybe you answered already and I missed it, but how old are each of our tigers and how long do they live generally? Uh, Calista is 19 and Waldo is 17. Um, tigers, uh, most of the big cats typically live to be upper teens to low twenties. Oh, did I ask you? Yeah. I think someone was wondering how long have you been a zookeeper and have you always worked with carnivores? Uh, I, I've been a zookeeper for 30 years now, um, and no, I started in the children's zoo um, as a summer uh, keeper, and I worked there for six years. I moved to um, the primate unit, and I did that for eight years, and now I've been in the carnivore unit ever since. One question was, you mentioned um, her having cubs. Was Waldo the father of those cubs then? Uh, Waldo is not the father of the five cubs. That was another male uh, named Kuntami that we get, uh, that came here from Omaha. Um, but after Kuntami left uh, and all the cubs left, we brought in Waldo, and um, he gave they gave birth to a single cub uh, at that point. So that's the only one they had together. Cool. Well. Let me see, any final questions if anyone has when you can throw it up in the chat or in the Q&A really quickly. But otherwise, thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us today. Is there anything conservation-wise you would like everyone to know about how they can help tigers in the wild at home? Um, you know, most uh, AZA institutions have lots of different conservation projects you can support. Um, you know, one of the, the big factors with tigers is habitat loss. Um, and a lot of that can be due to some palm oil. Um, so there are lots of companies that do responsible, sustainable palm oil. Um, so uh, buying those products can go a long way with helping tiger conservation. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we're really excited that you were able to join us today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time out of your busy schedule. I know this is such a full-time job and we really appreciate you doing it. We have such an amazing keeper staff here and we're so fortunate to be based in St. Louis at this wonderful zoo. So thank you again. Uh, we'll see y'all here. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Well, that was exciting. Yay! I personally haven't been to the zoo anytime recently, so I know it's super exciting for me to see the animals. I'm hoping to get in soon. And remember, you can make your reservations online or by phone. They're free. You just have to make sure to call and notify the zoo so that we know how many people are coming and we can give you a special reserved and timed spot to come visit. So, um, I'm gonna check the Q&A one more time before we sign off to make sure we have some questions answered. Now, I know someone was asking about tiger size, but tigers are the largest cats of the big cats. Now, they might not be as tall, a lion might be a little bit taller, but tigers weight-wise and length-wise are larger, which is kind of cool. And yeah, a lot of friends don't know that. What's really neat about tigers is that their stripes are not symmetrical from side to side. And I thought that was a really interesting fact. Also, Amur tigers, since they're from areas of the world that are really cold, they'll have a thicker fluff or neck scarf is what they like to call it um, around their neck than tigers that are from farther south where it's warmer. So you'll see this a lot more fluff. And also their stripes are fewer than other tiger subspecies. Well, thank you all so much for coming. I know I had a lot of fun today. And if you ever have any more questions or things for us, please let us know. Find our website at stlzoo.org and you can submit questions to us. All right. Also, something I want to mention, masks. When you come to the St. Louis Zoo, please bring your mask with you. It is required. We are selling some really fun ones. If you noticed 
uh, Connor's mask today had a big old tiger on it. You can find those in our gift shops or you can purchase masks online at sdlzoo.org. If you scroll down our webpage, you'll find a link. It's in a box with a photo about masks and where you can purchase them. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day and have fun celebrating World Tiger Day and Tiger Awareness Day at the St. Louis Zoo. Bye. Thank you.